Well, hello and Merry Christmas from all of us here at First Congregational Church of Hamilton. I'm Chelsea Erickson, the pastor of Youth and Families, and it, we're delighted to welcome you this evening uh, to share in this Christmas Eve family service. As we share the birth of Jesus through this virtual play that you'll see in a little while, we hope that you'll be touched and inspired by the true story of a king who left his heavenly home to dwell with us and save us from our sin. If you're new to church or attending for the first time in a while, or maybe even skeptical of the claims of Christianity, we'd love to follow up with you and continue the conversation. You can reach us by filling out the contact card on our website, or by emailing one of our pastors or staff, or by calling the church office, and we'd love to connect. We wanna say a special thank you tonight to Amy Watson and Jill Vanderwood, who have written, directed, and produced the original production that you'll see later in the service. We are so blessed by the way these two women and their families serve our church and point us to Jesus. If you see them in the weeks ahead, please express your thanks. We also want to thank all the middle and high school students and the other adults who have contributed their time and gifts to this year's production. It's our tradition as a church on Christmas Eve to give a special offering to bless our missionaries sharing the love of Jesus around the world. As many of you, as many of them, are not able to be with their extended families this year um, due to the virus, we, we want them to experience our love and care for them through this offering. So if you consider FCCH your church home, I'd invite you to just prayerfully consider what you might give to that offering this evening using the Christmas Eve missionary offering button on the Christmas live stream page. If you're new to our church, you're not obligated to give, you're welcome to participate if you, if you feel led. As we begin our service, boys and girls, listen to what Sally Lloyd-Jones says in the Jesus Storybook Bible about this special night when Jesus was born. That same night, in amongst the other stars, suddenly a bright new star appeared. 
of all the stars in the dark vaulted heavens, this one shone clearer. It blazed in the night and made the other stars look pale beside it. God put it there when his baby son was born to be like a spotlight shining on him, lighting up the darkness, showing people the way to him. You see, God was like a new daddy. He couldn't keep the good news to himself. He'd been waiting all these long years for this moment, and now he wanted to tell everyone. Boys and girls and grown-ups too, we can't keep the good news to ourselves either. We're so glad you've come to hear it. Before we share the story together, we're delighted to have the Siegel family come to share the lighting of the Christ candle. Hello, we are the Siegel family. Welcome to the Christmas Eve service. The hopes and fears of all the years are answered in the miraculous birth of Jesus. Behold, a virgin shall be with child. The prophecies are answered. The one who takes away sin and conquers death was revealed that night in Bethlehem. In an overcrowded town, bursting with travelers, Jesus, the Son of God, was born. The angels sang with joy, and a star shone over the place of his birth. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. The Magi brought gifts of gold and incense and myrrh, but the most important act recorded is the fact that they bowed down and worshiped Jesus. The Lord wants us to give our lives as our act of worship. O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Join me as we read together. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Let us pray. We come to you, Lord Jesus. We trust in you as the Son of God, the only Savior, the way, the truth, and the life. We follow you to the cross and see love expressed in the gift of your life. We see the reality of the empty tomb, and we have joy that you will come again. O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Siegel family, for leading us in lighting the Christ candle. That was such a good reminder of who Jesus is and the wonder of God being born as a baby. Before I pray, I want to remind those who wish to participate in our traditional Christmas gift to our missionaries serving around the world to do so at our website under the heading Christmas Eve Missionary Offerings. And thank you. This evening is a great opportunity to slow down and consider the message of peace on earth and goodwill to all at Christmas. The God who created is the same God who loves each of us and sent his son for us. It's my privilege to invite you all, boys and girls, men and women, to join me in a Christmas prayer. A great God, it wasn't necessarily a silent night when baby Jesus was born, but it was an important night. We thank you for the wonder, the mystery, and miraculous gift of your son Jesus, born of Mary in a stable. This baby, who grew to take away the sins of the world and to promise a better day with you. We celebrate this birth, his life and his victory over death that gives us good hope. We thank you that this good news is for boys and girls, men and women everywhere. Oh, we know there are many problems in the world. We know there are boys and girls who don't have enough to eat. We know there are families who are far from home and sad because they have lost loved ones. We feel the pain and the loneliness of the COVID pandemic. We thank you that you understand our troubles. You know our sorrows. It's because you came that you're a God who's near. You are indeed the God who is with us. Bring your forgiveness, your reconciliation, and your hope to people around the world. Help us to care for one another as you've cared for us and to seek the good of all in all that we do and in all that we say. We pray with gratitude for those we support who work in orphanages, 
who start schools, who translate scripture and train leaders around the globe in Jesus' name. Bless their efforts. We ask you to be with us this evening and every evening. And may the wonder of Christmas remind us again of the love and the faithfulness of God. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with the Father and Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Now, I want you to pay close attention as we unfold the story of Christmas with a fun presentation called Christmas is on the Air. Hey, kids! It's Mrs. McGillicuddy here. Yeah, I'm cleaning up the snow. Oh, yeah, it looks nice and clean right now, but it makes a mess when you let it pile up. I am so excited that Christmas is here. Christmas in December. You know, it wasn't too long ago when I was celebrating Christmas in July's with a few of you. Ha! I just realized I'm celebrating two Christmases this year. What a hoot! Well, Hank and I have been busy getting ready for the big day. Yeah, we decorated the Christmas tree. We put out the nativity set, wrapped the presents. I even had time to make my traditional Italian dessert, the macaroons with the cherry on top. <laughs> but let's not forget the real reason we celebrate Christmas. Why, it's Jesus, of course. Christmas is the celebration of Jesus' birth. Who is Jesus? Well, I'm glad you asked. You know, I knew that we weren't going to be able to get together and celebrate Christmas at the church like we usually do. So I asked a couple of friends to make a video answering just that question, who is Jesus? Well, I'm ready to watch it, and I'd like you guys to join in too. So I'm going to head inside, kick off my boots, and sit down and watch the show. Enjoy. Good evening, and welcome to the film version of Christmas is on the Air with Nicholas Martin. Christmas is about Jesus. Who is Jesus? His identity tells us the significance of what has happened on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and why we still celebrate it 2,000 years later. Welcome to this special edition of Christmas is on the Air. Who is Jesus? We have quite the lineup for you tonight. We are going to talk to shepherds about an amazing sight on Christmas Eve. Spoiler alert, it involves angels. We have a special guest appearance from Pastor Jeremy to answer some of your questions about who the Messiah is. We have a story about an innkeeper from Bethlehem who can answer the question, why did Mary give birth to Jesus in a cave? And finally, the angel Gabriel has an announcement that you will not want to miss. First, we are going to hear about two other parents who were not Mary and Joseph, but their story can help us understand who Jesus is. Michaela Petersheim has a story. It was well known in the community that Zachariah and Elizabeth could not have a baby. One day, Zachariah went to perform his duties in the temple. He was in there so long that the people outside were wondering if something had happened to him. The angel Gabriel told me that my wife, Elizabeth, was going to have a son, and I was to name him John. A baby! We were too old to have a baby, so when Gabriel told me, I did not believe him. So I said, here's what I said, you ready? I said, prove it. So I was struck dumb until John was born. And I couldn't speak a word until I wrote down that his name should be John. But that is only the beginning of John's story. God had sent John to prepare the people of Israel for his own coming. John grew up and, be and lived in the desert and became known as John the Baptist. He called people to repent because the kingdom of God is near. One is coming who is greater than I. I am not even worthy to untie his shoes. The man who is coming baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. Yes, brother. That's my boy! Holy Spirit. I only baptize with water, but he baptizes you. And who is he talking about? John was talking about Jesus. Wow, Michaela, that story gives us a clue as to why we celebrate Jesus' birth. Jesus is connected to the kingdom of God, and he is powerful. Our next segment talks also about Jesus, but this time the message comes from the shepherds in the field. 
Adelaide Baird has this next report. It happened on the edge of the town of Bethlehem. Shepherds were watching their sheep when suddenly the night exploded into light. Let's talk to the shepherds who lit, witnessed this event. So exciting! Oh. <laughs> Can you tell us what happened? Well, it was supposed to be a regular night. You know, sing a few songs. Ba, ba, black sheep. Count the sheep. Ba. Poke the fire, but woohoo! <laughs> that is not what happened. Can you tell us what happened first? First, there's nothing in front of me. And then pow, there's this being standing in front of me. He's bright, sort of majestic looking. And I say to myself, I think that's an angel. So I turn to Barney and I say, I think that's an angel. And then we fall on the ground. And then he starts talking to us in our language so we could actually understand it. And then all of these other angels appear in the sky and start singing and praising God. What did the angels say? They said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce great and joyful events meant for everybody worldwide. A savior has been born in David's town, a savior who is Messiah and master. This is what you are to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and laying in a manger. And then there were angels singing all around us. Glory to God in heaven and peace to all men and women on earth on whom his favor rests. La, 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 la. So we went to Bethlehem to see what the angels were talking about. When we got there, we found the new baby wrapped in a blanket and laying in a manger. Then we went and told everyone we saw about the new baby. You told everyone? everyone. The new baby is the Messiah that we've all been waiting for. The angel said he's our savior. Praise God that he decided to tell us about the new savior that has come down. I think everyone should know about this so we can all celebrate. Some very exciting news in Bethlehem. The Messiah was born. The savior. Wow, that is quite the story. Angels and the Messiah in Bethlehem? I wish I could have seen that. Perhaps our next guest could shed some light on how possible it is that Jesus is the Messiah. It is time for our weekly meeting with the pastor. Pastor Jeremy, you have studied the prophecies about the Messiah. Some children have sent in videos asking questions about the prophecies. Do you think you could answer their questions? Of course, I would be uh, delighted to. Hi, I'm Zoe. I heard that there are prophecies in the Bible. What's a prophecy? The first thing to know is what a prophecy is. And there can be two types of prophecy. One is a forth telling, where a prophet uh, is telling forth God's message to God's people. But a foretelling is a promise or a prediction that something's going to happen in the future. Uh, for example, if I said that Nick's going to sneeze uh, by the time this segment is, is finished, uh, that would be a, a foretelling. It's uh, predicting that something's going to happen later on. Hi, Pastor Jeremy. My name is Emma. Where are some prophecies about the Messiah? And in the Old Testament, you find that God has so many uh, foretelling types of prophecies about the coming Messiah. Uh, but there's actually very few when it comes to uh, the Messiah's birth. Uh, one of the favorites is in Isaiah 7, uh, verse 14. It says this, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. You learn a few things there. Uh, first, that we learn that this is going to be a miraculous birth. Uh, a virgin's going to conceive. The next thing you learn is that the Messiah is going to be a boy. She will bear a son. And then, most importantly, we learn that God himself is going to come down in the form of a human being like us. And that's why his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. Hi, my name is Joe, and how do we know that Jesus is the Messiah? 
Jesus fulfills so many of these prophecies in the Old Testament. If he just fulfilled eight, uh, that would be highly unlikely. But get this, scholars, uh, they, they count almost around 300 of these prophecies that Jesus has fulfilled. And that's proof, it's evidence that Jesus truly is the Messiah who has come on a rescue mission for us. Thank you, Pastor Jeremy, for answering the prophecy questions. Jesus is the Messiah who came to earth, but why did he come to earth? For that information, we are talking to Jake Basinger and an innkeeper. Hello, I'm here this evening with the innkeeper who, although she did not have a room, did take Mary and Joseph, the parents of Jesus, in. I gave them the cave out back we use as a stable. So there was no room left in your inn? It was more full than Barnabas's bar mitzvah two years ago. I didn't have to put anyone in the barn then. I have people coming from every province with dialects I can't even understand. It's hard to believe we all started from the same tribe. And tell me about the couple in the barn. They are Mary and Joseph. There is Mary. Oh, there's Mary now. Mary, hold up the baby. <laughs> they traveled here all the way from Nazareth. I mean, my inn is full, but one look at Mary and I knew I had to help her. She looked like a cow. And I, I mean that in a nice way. Anyway, I've been there. You should have seen me when I was pregnant. I'm a baby, you need all the help you can get. My husband brought them to the barn with their donkey and gave them food and blankets. I had to tend to my other guests. I am an innkeeper, you know. But it's a good barn. They seem to like it. And were you involved with the birth of the baby? No. My inn is bursting at the seams. But Joseph did tell us when it was all over, and I was thrilled. I told them they should name the baby Jezebel after me. Then they found out it's a boy. And so what did they name the baby? Jesus? It means the Lord is salvation? Can you believe that? They're gonna name him that. Well, so there you have it. This is where Jesus the Savior was born. A bright spot in a dark cave. Back to you, Nick. Thank you for that illuminating report. The Savior was born in Bethlehem. Jesus came to earth to save us. But to save us from what? More on that in a moment. But first we have a pop quiz about the prophecy. The pop quiz tonight is, what three things did the prophecy in Isaiah 7.14 tell us? How do you turn this thing on? It's already on, Bernard. We can see and hear you. Guys, channel your inner peace. Don't fight. Come on. Don't fight. God will make everything right, so don't fight. We are not fighting. She has trouble hearing. I can hear perfectly fine. Thank you. Now, who's going to deliver the message? You said you wanted to say it. I'll do it. I'll do it. <clears throat> we are wise men from the East. We study the stars, and we believe there is meaning behind their alignment. I'm digging the stars, man. We were studying our astrology books when we realized there's a new star in the sky. We searched for the meaning of the star and concluded that it means the birth of a new king. We would like the location of this new king. We are so psyched to find this king. We want to raise him up and worship this king. If anyone dude. has information concerning the new king, please contact us. Email PersianAstronomersUnited.org I thought we were going to set out on a journey.
It's back? Okay. Oh, it's back! Hi! Sorry about that. We seem to have lost control of the airwaves for a moment from what appears to be some wise men from the east. Mm. Sorry. Apparently, the news of Jesus' birth had spread outside the boundary of Bethlehem. The wise men live a thousand miles away in a place called Persia. Now back to our quiz. What three things did the prophecy in Isaiah 7.14 tell us? The answer is the Savior will be a boy. He will be born to a virgin, and he will be God come down to earth. Did you answer the quiz correctly? Good job. We now turn to a special report with Margaret Turpel. The angel Gabriel has an important message about why Jesus came to earth. Are you seeing this? I, I can't believe I'm seeing this. I am here with Gabriel, an angel of the Lord. The angel Gabriel says he has a message for everyone who is here. It is about the new baby Jesus. The baby who was born in Bethlehem is not an ordinary baby. His birth was foretold. The prophet Isaiah told you the reason that the Savior came to earth. Jesus was pierced for your transgressions. He was crushed for your iniquities. The punishment that brought you peace was on him, and by his wounds you have been healed. Behold, the light comes and the darkness will not put it out. Jesus was born to suffer for your sins. He conquered death when he rose again. To those who believe, he has given the Holy Spirit. Behold the Savior! His name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Thank you, Gabriel, for that incredible message. And that concludes our special report of Christmas is on the air. Merry Christmas, everyone. God bless you. Go in peace and good night. Oh, welcome back, everyone. Oh, I really needed that. Jesus died for me. It makes me cry every time. But, but it's a happy cry. <laughs> Now, we're not done yet. Now, every year when we get together, we sing Silent Night, and we're going to do that still. So, go gather your candles up if you have some. I'll wait. Go on. Go on. Hey, get the candle. You ready? All right. Now, I want you to light it and remember to sing out. Merry Christmas, everyone.
Well, what a joy uh, this has been to be with you in this way. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed our special Christmas programming this year. Christmas is on the air. But most importantly, we hope that the gift and the light of Jesus would shine brightly in your heart and in your life. And I am excited to share more about this in just a little bit in our 6 p.m. service. But go with God's blessing. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may the love of God, the grace of Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Merry Christmas and good night.